Hello everyone, this is Raven Maddock from Chrysalis Studios doing another customizing video for ICE or IC. Not sure how I pronounce it, but it is ICE spelt as ICE with two E's. So that's the International Custom Equine or Customizing Equine event. So it's not a competition, it's a two month um two month learning experience slash event slash Nobody knows what's gonna happen, but it's gonna be magical. Um, I'm here with my model. I haven't cut her up yet. This is the Briar Gretel. Um, and I'm going to go over quickly just how I um, draw my marks and figure out where I'm gonna cut stuff. So um, with this particular model, she's actually gonna be in a lying down pose, which means everything has to change and basically be re-sculpted. So, with a briar, um, I will usually keep a little bit of the plastic intact to move things around just because it keeps the integrity a little bit better, makes her a little stronger, um, and provides a good armature. If it was a resin, I'd probably just cut off the pieces and redo them all because it's just easier that way. And I would use the wire method, so I would, if I was taking this leg off, just cut it all off and then place a wire in there, seal it with baking soda and super glue, um, which forms a really strong bond. Uh, note on the side, if you use that combination of baking soda and super glue, you're going to want to be careful because it does heat up and it hurts like a bugger if it gets you. Um, I actually have a permanent scar on my thigh from it melting through my jeans and into my flesh. So just be careful. Um, so anyways, I would, if I was using a resin or something solid, I would use that wire method and connect the two pieces. So drill into here, put wire in, wire in it, baking soda super glue to solidify it and use it as cement. And then in here and sculpt from there. Um, but since this is a briar, I can use it as a little bit of a um, armature. So what I'll end up doing is her leg needs to actually come um, fold up underneath her. So this part needs to come back and this part needs to come forward and then everything needs to come up. So um, I basically need to accordion everything up. That means that I'm going to have to take out what's going to get in the way. Now that's generally how I think about where I'm going to cut is what's going to get in the way and what's going to make my life easy. You could cut everything off and start from scratch. You could hack legs entirely off and start from scratch. But especially if, like say with this front leg, I'm only moving it a little bit up. I'm not going to have to worry about cutting this entirely off and then re-sculpting it. It's a little bit easier to take this little chunk out that's going to get in the way. Heat this entire area up here and then move that up. Um, and that will be a lot easier than having to re-sculpt it. You can get some warping and some issues if you're heating, um, so be careful, but it's a little bit nicer to be able to do it like that. So you can see on this girl, I've already kind of cut out a section. I have it marked on this side too that that's what I'm gonna do, but you can't really see it because it's black. Anyway, um, so this allows me to heat this joint. It removes what's in the way and it allows me to bend that joint naturally. So you're gonna to wanna to think about it all like that. So you wanna see where the bones are. Here's an example. Where the bones are and how that's gonna bend. So from straight to bent, what's gonna get in the way? And it's all this stuff back here, which is what's behind her knee, which is what I cut out. And then same goes for down here. You're gonna to want to look at where you wanna move something. The easiest general way to um, move something is to leave that middle piece intact. So especially for a hoof, that allows me the most flexibility either way. If I were to cut, um, just say the front part off, that means that it's going to swing a lot more backwards. And if I cut just the back part off, that means it's going to swing a lot more forwards. So just be careful as to how you're going to do that. And, um, kind of sort of think about it like the joint. You want the joint to move like a joint moves. So um, try and figure that out. It can be a little challenging at first, but you figure it out eventually. Lots of practice. That's what it worked for me. Um, and with the neck here, because there's so much on it and I'm moving it so drastically, it's coming all the way around to the other side and totally bent. It's easier for me to re-sculpt it. So what I do is I would take a hacksaw or a dremel, cut these two pieces off, and then again, use wire and baking soda to connect it, turn the head around because it's a lot easier to work with and go from there. This is removing this entire section just so that it's easier. Now with the hawk, um, if I'm moving this joint back, and so I want this section to move back like that, I remove what's in the way. I remove this section here. 
Normally a little triangle works well because then when you heat it, it wants to sit inside of that triangle. So you can just push it right up. And a good tip if you're heating something, you can heat it with a um, heat gun or with hot water. And you can use a piece of fabric, so an old t-shirt or an old towel, and use that as a buffer between your hands or like an oven mitt or something, just so you're not worrying about burning your hands. And then have a bit of cold water on hand so you can dip your finger in there and cool that area off and then move it or take a paintbrush and cool that area off. So if you don't want this part to warp and you want to move here, heat this and then cool that off with a little bit of cold water and then move it because that will mean that this isn't going to warp on you and turn into spaghetti legs. Um, if you're moving in the hawk, so the hawk kind of moves, that's your middle point. So you can actually take a chunk out here and a chunk out here. Um, I have it just marked in the back because that's I want it to swing a little forward and I'm not too worried about this section but the safest bet if you're moving a hawk and you're moving it a lot is to cut that entire section out just above where that tendon is cut the front area where the tendon is leave that joint intact and just yank and heat it up so that'll allow it to move on that axis and it won't warp it too bad um, on the other side, same kind of idea. I've got her marked out to remove what's in the way. There, 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 in here, same idea. This foot's actually about in the right position that I want it, so I won't mess with it until I get it closer and feel out exactly how much it needs to tweak. And then for her here, if you're moving an entire shoulder, it's best to cut all the way, you can see it all the way under. And then I would even go all the way up here. Um, I need to remove her neck first to figure out where that goes, but that allows you to heat up up here, which is still connected by plastic, and then pull it all forward. Because you can see, let's see if I can get her there. You can see if I hold her like this, this shoulder's way back here. This is way over here. So there's a big difference between here and here. So if you cut this all the way up here, heat it and move it forward, you can actually have it placed forward. And with a horse, they don't have collarbones, so they have nothing holding them here, which means that their shoulders move very freely. If you see a horse from above, their shoulders float and they go back and forth, back and forth quite a bit. And so that allows me, because I'm making her laying down, to move that entire shoulder forward like it needs to be. And it's just pivoting on that nice plastic that heats up. And then once that's cooled again, um, you can use, again, cold water to cool it off and solidify it. Then it's going to be super strong and a really good base to start my customizing with. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the tip for the day. Have yourself a fantastic day and happy customizing.